Howdy folks. Little John and uh, in uh, deep into the second day of uh, isolation. Uh, so, <laughs> well, Sunday afternoon, no better time to have a few beers. So, why not taste a couple of these uh, recent batches that are going on? So, I'm going to have myself a few here. So, first one is the Yellow Cascarillo Ale. Get a little fizzy. Uh, now he's been in the uh, for a little while. We're also doing the uh, I touted originally for sweet sweet coffee vanilla stout, but um, extract and I don't think it's come up anywhere near dark enough to be a stout. I think it's going to be more just a dark ale, but we'll see how we look at that. Yeah, definitely not a stout, that's for sure. Fucking hell. I've been having some drama with bloody overly carved beers of late. Anybody else having problems? I've been using carb drops. Um, and having all sorts of dramas. So, has anybody else been having the same problem? If so, shoot a comment down the bottom. I'll tell you, I'm getting bloody jack of it because these, you know, they're lightly carved. Well, not lightly, but they're not heavily carved. And last one here is the uh, Fuggles Wet Hop Harvest Ale. Done with. Uh, 20 Litchford's homegrown fuggles. So, three considerably different beers there. So, let's start off with the old Cascarillo. So, I said uh, extract. I'll link up the uh, Peru Davids for these. Uh, all these beers at the top. Yeah, assuming I can't get at that one, <laughs> we might actually go down the far end. I'm going to start with uh, the Harvest Ale. So, so this is from Todd Letchford's homegrown Fuggles, one of the Patreons. Hey, cheers, Todd. Uh, Maris Otter, a bit of crystal, pale chocolate. Um, Heap of Fuggles, 60 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes. Uh, I've not written down what I actually used. Uh, it was 180, 180, and about 161 memory. So I'm going for just a pommy, you know, straight up pommy special bitter. Uh, it's fairly murky. This is being bottled. Bottled on the 6th of March. So it's... 30... It's three and a half weeks old. Um, a small head there. Original gravity 1051. Finished at 1012. Uh, on a keg and a few bottles, two thirds of a carb drop. It's fairly uh, it's nicely carved. It didn't fizz much on day but it's got a nice carb level. Okay. It's quite tasty. Yeah, when I bottled this, I tasted it. That the hops were just, oh, just was just like crazy. Um, tasted really um, 
no, didn't taste good. Um, well again, I don't use especially fresh hops. Uh, wet hops, something I've um, not really used before. I've used homegrown stuff that's been dried, but never, never wet. And certainly, I might use a little bit, but not to this sort of to this level. But it's quite nice. Nice malt. I'm not, the, the, the hops are doing exactly what they're meant to do. They're just there. There's no, they're not shout when it's bug offs, they don't shout out, they're not a big, they're not in your, in your face, they're not, you know, they're not a big flavour. But they're doing their thing, they're just there, they're just hanging. There's a nice gentle bitterness up front. I didn't want a big, didn't want a huge bitterness. Um, we're only shooting for 29 and 30 IBU, so it wasn't anything excessive, especially with the uh, with the gravity. Um, I said, yeah, 5.6% in the bottle, um, so it's not a lot of not a lot of bitterness there, but it's just a gentle, earthy. A little bit of spice, a touch of a touch of black currant, hint of pepper. Yeah, oh, look, I'm really happy with that. It still tastes a little green. Again, been only three and a half weeks in the bottle. That doesn't surprise me. I think it may benefit for another couple of weeks. Um, Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, I said I will. Um, I will revisit this a little bit down the track because I do think it will age nicely. Um, but Todd, for now, yeah, cheers, mate. That's a bloody cracking beer. Oh, there you go. Stop there. I get six times the weight of hop share. 180. Right on. El, Cas El Cascarillo. All extract, light dry malt, the amber malt, a little bit of dex for uh, just to keep the body down. Uh, it's a nice colour, sort of pretty much what I was after. Nice good orange, orange hue. Uh, I don't want to pour too much more of those bottles to up the um, bit of the yeast. Calf's nice now that it's settled down. Oh. Hops for Cascade, Amarillo, El Dorado. Cascade at 20 and El Marillo, El Dorado both hot into the fermenter. Um, 12 litre batch, no chill. So we are sort of like a flame out, whirlpool edition. Just dropped them in. There's lots of, it's a lot of bubble gum there. Uh, which may be coming from, may be coming from the yeast. It was a small, I've got a small USA 5 starter at 18, 18 degrees. Um, so that may just be a little, you know, it may just be from being just up in, well, actually it's not that young. This was bottled 16th of February, so it's, Sort of five, only six weeks old. Original gravity 1056, finished at 1012, 6.3% alcohol, so it's fairly fairly solid. Um, Amarillo and El Dorado dry hop on day four.
Okay. Good flavour. But I think, yeah, I think there's definitely a... Um, effect from some stressed yeast. I don't think that yeast starter was particularly good. I've got a funny feeling I didn't get, really get on in time and it's... It's not overly there in the flavour, it is, it's more in the nose. Um, I don't think that nose is coming from the hops. And yeah, in the flavour, it's, it's coming at it, sort of, right in the mouth. Um, it's a real shame because I think that's a really, that's a really nice bloody beer there. Um, that's what I think on the day. I think I, was, I think I ended up rushing this beer, uh, which I, sh I should know actually done better. But and this is part of what I was talking about recently with the, you know, pulling things back a little bit. I was getting a little bit carried away with what I was doing and getting and rushing myself, um, and not always, not always being fully prepared for brew day. Um, this is the second recent brew now. We've had this, I had that same issue where the starter really hadn't really hadn't grown as much as it should have when I was pitching it, um, and that's I said the second beer now. It's had the same bubble gum um, nose and effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so that aside, that combination is working pretty well. Um, and as I said, I've, I've done the Amarillo and the El Dorado before, done the El Dorillo Ale. Um, and it works really well. Um, I'm not sure, I think I might have just sent it, I think I might have just put that out to the, um, to the patrons as the uh, recipe of the month, the original um, El Dorillo Ale. Um, the cascade certainly isn't hurting, but I think yeah, I wasn't I think I just rushed it. I think definitely a beer I could I could certainly revisit, or if you've got the uh, video there with the recipe, um, certainly a beer that's worth doing with a decent, with a proper pitch, and um, maybe not so rushed, and actually doing a proper chill. Um, definitely a good beer. Uh, that's just yeah, I just it's paying for being rushed. Only yeah, no one to blame but myself for that one. Um, I've got a keg of it, so I think I can probably, <laughs> I can probably yeah, regain that keg and use it for something else. Uh, now this fella, sweet coffee, sweet coffee stout again. It's, um, it's extract. Um, and I think I might have commented at the time when I was when actually when I was brewing it, I was a bit concerned about um, getting enough depth from just doing extract um, for really to get a stout. And like I said, it's definitely not stout. It's not even pushing. Not even porter. You know, it's barely a dark ale. Um, and Obviously, I could have put more dark dry malt, but the main thing I was looking for this one was just more worried playing around with a bit of the coffee. Yeah. Now, I did do a steep, um, which it certainly seems was beneficial, but um, would have. There was no black grain. I didn't have any roast. I thought I did, but I didn't. Um, so, the best I had was special V. Um, which certainly isn't, isn't quite the same, so, uh, as you can see, <laughs> it's brought an absolutely cracking head and it's holding like no, nobody's business. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the coffee. Mm. Coffee nose is absolutely phenomenal on that. Um, so this was just whole coffee beans in the boil. Um, so I said it was the dry malts, a small steep which was added to the boil, uh, hops with centennial, there was some cocoa, cocoa, cake, cacao powder, um, and some lactose into the boil as well. 
So I was looking, I was looking for that coffee, chocolate, and some, you know, some sweetness. Um, so, you know, pushing into a milk stout sort of a thing. Uh, yeast was the Imperial Pub, which is um, like a pommy, pommy liquid. Uh, original gravity was 1084. It was a lot higher than I was expecting. Uh, finished at 1024. Finished quite high. Again, which was a bit of a threat. I expected the finish maybe 1016, 1018 with lactose, but it went way, way, way under that. Well, uh, so final gravity 8.3%. Uh, that's a big chocolate, chocolate, big coffee nose. But yeah, there is some chocolate there as well. Ooh. Oh, fuck, yum. Oh, that is good. Fucking hell. Pardon. Pardon excessive language. It is thick. Massive body. Chocolate, sweet. Very, just it's only a gentle coffee on the on the on, on the palate. It's 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 clearly there, but it's only gentle. It doesn't match up to the nose. It's there's some sweetness, but it's not an obvious sweetness. You don't drink and go, oh, that's sweet. It's just balancing with all the. All the flavour of the coffee and the chocolate. Nice, oh, nice bitter edge. Oh, yeah, that is bloody good. Um, I've got to say, it's, it's, it's bloody, it's too nice and too easy to drink, 3.3%, um, that could get seriously freaking dangerous, but oh, yeah, that's um, blowing my mind a little bit, that is fabulous. As I said, very, um, to a degree, very experimental. Um, didn't throw it under the banner of the Bruventures beers, but um, as with all those extract beers I've done in the last sort of three, four months, um, they're all experimental to some to some degree. Um, whether it was the method, the hopping, the yeah, the ingredients. Um, that certainly fell into that category. Now, I've never done a milk stout before. Um, I've used coffee in previous brews, never actually directly in the brew. I've, done, I've smoked some more than coffee and, uh, and stuff. But that... So it was just whole beans straight in the boiler. Was it? They weren't crushed, they weren't ground up, they were just whole beans straight in. Um, top me, top of my head. I think they were. Um, they were beans. I think it was a combination of some beans I got from Ichuka, uh, which was a New Guinea Purosa, Purosa by memory, um, and some beans I got up at um, Etalong on the central coast as well. Just the tail end of two bags I got while I was on holidays. But yeah, that's come up bloody fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mm, it's rich and tasty. Got a bit of bitterness. 
there's hops there without being all stand out. Um, it's at Centennial at 45 and straight into the ash, into the fermenter. And when you, if you look for it, you can just taste that. There's that hint of orange, that citrusy orange you get from the Centennial. It's just sitting underneath, um, just playing with that, playing with that, with that cocoa. Um, okay, cool. Cacao, not quite cocoa, uh, with ground ground cacao. Um, and again, was the first one I've actually used cacao in um, in a brew. Um, and this is powdered. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. So these two, both bloody good bits. This was bottled. Same day as the Harvest Ale um, on the sixth, so just over three and a half weeks old. I think that's going to age really well. I think that in another, yeah, give it another six weeks, even nine weeks. Yeah, you know, three months old. I think that those flavours are just going to really come together and just be, yeah, a beautiful mix. So that's going to be a lovely winter beer um, without going straight much into the stouts. Um, a little bit of roasted barley in that ribbon of roasted malt just to get that little bit extra in there I think it really kick that up a notch um, but fantastic at this so if you, want, you know, if you want to have a look at that recipe give it a crack um, as it is it's good add a little bit more dark stuff in there it's certainly not going to hurt a touch of vanilla wouldn't even go yeah it wouldn't even go astray um, yeah, but don't you wouldn't want to push it too far. That fella there, I think another that's another three weeks or so. Um I might be able to take a bottle or two of this too with me when we go to uh over to Canberra. And we'll be travelling back so but I'll give this one another few weeks and I'll try it again. I think that's it. I think that will need three weeks. Um It is. It's good though. I think just another couple of weeks, just to let, because there's still a little bit of that greenness and vegetative taste from the hops, which I, which I'm pretty confident will smooth out a little bit longer in the in the bottle. That for the moment, I said, yeah, yeast has not done that any good. Um, brew is fine. Make sure you just get the yeast right. These two, a little bit longer with that right now. Mm. No, anyway, these three, most reasons. Got any comments, any questions on any of these beers? You know, many beers in the beers past. Um, shoot, shoot them down the bottom, no problem at all. Um, we'll say while I'm doing this one, um, the white chocolate coconut IPA has come along absolutely sensationally it is a cracker of a beer even with the fact that I don't like what the food says doing in that beer um, but the beer itself the flavors have just come up really really nicely um, and worked really well so if you are looking if you're looking for something a little bit different in your IPA yeah you know, look at that and take something from, from that as well to all the patrons, as always, you know, guys, thanks for your support. Um, especially you know, at the moment, difficult times um, for everybody. Um, aside from what, you know, myself and Mrs. Little John have got coming up in the next, you know, next lot. We said um, on day two on a mandatory, um, what's going to be a nine to ten week isolation. Um, so she can get through her um, radiation treatment safely without risk to ourselves or to anybody else. Um, so, so, yeah, cheers, guys. But yeah, everyone, everyone at home, cheers. Good, yeah, it's always great to have people along getting comments. So, 
If you haven't subscribed to Little John, hit the button down there in the corner. Um, that's all we do, we play around. Occasionally we get some beers that don't work right. Occasionally we get some absolute bloody blinders. Uh, and sometimes we help one another out and we get good stuff in, you know, as a result. Um, if you think about being a TV, if you're considering being a patron, and I, and I, I get that right now, it's a really difficult bloody time for a lot of people. Um, yeah, if you are interested, have a look at the link down below. Um, other than that, I'm done. I'm going to uh, sit down, finish these, crap on a little bit on Facebook. Um, judging by the way I'm feeling or not, or already from these, um, I'll probably bloody be lucky to uh, be coherent within sort of another 20 minutes or so when I do finish these. Uh, they've all got a little bit of bite in them. Um, but anyway, that's me, little John for the day. So, well, guys, till I see you again, brewing beer, drinking beer, or talking beer, good brewing. <laughs>